Well, God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion on a Sunday morning. How about you get on your feet and give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of God on a Sunday morning. Oh, I know you can do a better job than that. Give God praise. Amen. We welcome you to Mount Zion. We thank you. We're grateful to see you out today. We thank you for everyone that's in the parking lot. We know our parking lot praisers are out there. Go ahead and honk your horn and give God praise in the parking lot. And we also have our online praises. I love it. We're online, we're in the parking lot, and we're in the house. Give God praise for all the good things that are happening on a Sunday morning. Well, I know you can say like I can say this morning that the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's to say that when I think about the goodness of God, there's a joy that I, that I experience, an unspeakable joy, somebody said. When I wake up in the morning, I just like to thank God for another day. Thank Him for my health. Thank Him for my strength. Thank Him for everything that I have. That's an attitude of gratitude. That's giving God praise. And you know, one thing we know about praise is that praise precedes the victory. I believe that God has victory for someone in store here today. Anybody believe that this morning? Well, in the scriptures, you know, it says this in 1 Corinthians. It says, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What you got to know today is that God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how old you are. You got to know that God has a plan for you. And it's a powerful decision to make when the scripture says, when you make the decision to be steadfast and immovable. That's to say that I'm going to stand in my faith and I'm going to believe in God that God is going to work in my circumstances. God is going to work in my life. God is going to work in my difficulties. I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy because I know I serve a good God. Do I have a witness that's in the house today? So today I truly do believe that God has a word in store for you, a life-changing word, a miracle-working word today. And we're going to lock in and just receive all that God has in store for us. So as we begin, if you could just lift up your hands to the heavenlies and let's just go to God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this moment that we have for you, with you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord, to come before your presence, Lord. And we come here today with thanksgiving, Lord. We're going to praise and worship your name because you're worthy of all of the praise, Father. We invite you to come into this place in your amazing way, Lord. Send a life-changing word, Lord, today to the people of God. We thank you for the faithful people of God to hear today. Rain down your blessings, Lord. Send down words of encouragement, Lord. Hear the hearts of the hurt. Be with us on this day. And we'll forever give your name the praise, the glory, and honor. We pray all these things in your precious name. Let all the people of God shout amen and give God praise all around the sanctuary. Come on, praise to you.
is here, let's worship God. The Spirit of the Lord is here, let's worship God. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, let's worship God. Let's worship God. Oh Your name is God, a strong tower, you make me say, oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name, your name Strong tower, you make me say, oh, 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 there's nobody like you, Lord, nobody like you, Lord, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. 
this morning, do not underestimate the power of God. And the devil is trying to get you to believe that what you're dealing with is too big for God. As if it's above God. But I've come to tell you that there's nothing too big for our God. Amen. And I don't know about your experience, but I know the kind of God that I serve. And when I hear like this, who is a God like this? I hear a God that's been my healer, a God that's been my deliverer. And you gotta know today that praise precedes the victory. I said praise precedes the victory. So when you call on his name, God goes to work. team for blessing us every single Sunday this praise team delivers I don't know about you but I, I come to church and I play my Christian music and I'm jamming but I can't wait to get in the house of God to be blessed by this praise team right here give them give God praise one more time well amen God bless you we welcome you to Mount Zion on this beautiful Sunday morning did anybody enjoy that 80 degree weather on yesterday? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Well, it's good to see you. Uh, we have our announcements that we want to update you on. There's so many things that are going on here at Mount Zion. You know, starting on last week, we just took a pause. You know, it's good to pause and breathe sometimes and to see how far God has brought us in a year. And if you look at where we were on last year, now I know we all face difficulties challenges in our lives experience things but when we look back we can say that God is good God is still at work and that is great to say and I, I'm grateful for what God is doing in your life and all the testimonies that I've heard but us as a church as a family God is doing some great things here at Mount Zion I'm grateful for so we have our updates from Pastor Larry uh, Jr. who's going to give those to us now so if we could play that Hey, it's Pastor Larry. I just wanted to give you a few updates on Mount Zion and what we believe. You know, a year ago, I started sending you these videos to update you on where we're going as a church and how we're going to move forward during the pandemic. And look and see that we're still standing and God is still good. And he still sits on this throne and we've always been open for worship and ready to serve. You know, many people have asked, are you still doing weddings and funerals? And the answer is yes, we are. We're still doing them, and we have made adjustments to make them safe. Yes, for a moment, we'll limit the numbers, and we have to spread people out a bit, but for those sacrifices, there's nothing more important than to be able to consummate marriage or celebrate life after leaving this earth than in your church. You know, we have a large facility, which allows us to be safe with distance and mask and limit time in the building and also proceed forward. And also during this time, it's important for everyone to serve. That's why you see us serving seniors and people who need food. That's been our aim since the beginning and we're continuing throughout this time as we're seeing people in our community to do better uh, due to what we have been offering them. So we're gonna keep doing that. And what else are we doing? We're influencing and setting the groundwork for more prayer in the lives of people and also memorializing those we have lost. Through our prayer room and our prayer garden, we're making safe spaces for people to connect with God and also places to remember those we have lost in a unique way. Remember, we thank God for the lives of those we lost and we remember them for moments that we had to share with them. So we will be providing a way for you to receive memorial stones in our prayer garden for your family. We ask that you would support this and also be a part of it. 
We also will be advocates for health and safety during this time. You know, we've partnered with doctors to give us answers to our biggest health questions. And we also are advocates of the COVID-19 vaccine while not trying to put down others who are not ready yet to take it. You know, we want to make it available to those who would like to be protected. And so we have recently been partnering uh, with our own vaccine days from Mount Zion at the Wolfstein Center with the Federal Emergency uh, Medical Agency at University Hospitals has been our partner where we've had locations where people affiliated with our ministry can get their vaccine. You know, we still believe in social distancing and masks, and we believe in safe gathering with the right instructions. You know, our main goal is always to share the message of Jesus Christ to the world in conventional and unconventional ways. So now we have to invest in technology. We have to invest in the newest and most innovative ways to meet people where they are. Lastly, remember, we are still in this thing together. If you need us, we're always here. And when we need you, we know that you'll be there too. I believe as my father has coined in his vision, we are rebounding together. God bless you. God loves you. And we love you too. And don't forget it. Take care. Amen. Let the church say amen. Give God a great big hand praise as we stand to our feet. Amen. As we turn our Bibles to Malachi 3, 6 through 12, we're so glad to see all of you inside of the church. So glad to see all of you who are out there in the parking lot. Uh, we're praising God inside your car. Again, we're thankful for all of you who are online. Thank you for being with us at worship services. The Bible says we must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Amen? Amen. As we turn our Bibles to Malachi 3, 6 through 12, and those of you who are in your cars, if you can turn your Bible to Malachi 3, 6 through 12 is where, well, and we're going to read it responsibly. I'll read the first, you the second, and we're going to prepare ourselves for the tithing. The Bible says, bring ye all the tithe and the offering into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And when you tithe, God certainly turns around and gives you more than what you have granted to him. How much do we owe God? We owe it all, 100%. But he only asks us to deposit 10% into his kingdom and then do the offering which is beyond that. Here is what he says in Malachi 3, 6 through 12. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say in verse 7, in the house and in the car and online, even what? You have what? And have not? Do what? Where and shall we return? Here is the question. Will a man, woman, rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. And this is a bad time to do anything against God. Have I got a witness in the house? This is a bad time to rob God. Verse 9. Ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be a meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Neither shall your vine cast. And verse 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a lightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's bow our heads in a word of thanks unto God right now. Talk to God in your own way and tell him how grateful you are for placing funds inside of your household, for providing you with food and clothing and shelter, and even right now for providing you with health care during times like these for blessing you and your family to be able to even still go to some restaurants and even still do some things outdoors, even to fulfill some plans that you have been trying to fulfill for some time. It's all because of God, making it where you're not in a pinch, but rather you have prosperity. Pray for our church right now as we continue to do all of these marvelous ministry that Pastor Larry and Dan has been talking about. Pray that we can still provide for our community in a marvelous kind of a way. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this time that you've allowed us to assemble in the house of the Lord. We thank you for all of these worshipers who are here today. We thank you, God, for those inside and outside. Now, God, you gave us a, a, a kind of directive. You said to us, if we would bring the tithe and offering in a certain kind of a way, you will open up. 
the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. We thank you, God, even for the blessings that are being poured out from the government to help us to support our time during this pandemic. We thank you, God, for being the God that you are. Bless us now in Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God shout it, amen. Would you lift up your tithe and give God a wave offering? And all of you who are tithe and giving your offering, we ask you to come to the front area, remaining six feet apart. Amen. All tithes come now. All of those who are giving offering, you can come. Those inside of your cars, if you'll just open your window a little bit so that you can toss your tithe and your offering into the receptacle because you are important as well. You can't be God's given no matter how much you try. The more you give, the more God will give back to you. He's the greatest giver. He's given us everything. Wake us up in the morning and starts us on our way. Press down. and wave to your neighbors and let them know that you're happy to see them in the house of God. And I tell you that there are smiles on every face that you're looking at right now. You can't see it through the mask, but everybody's smiling here at Mount Zion as you may be seated. God bless you. It's good to see you all. Good to see some smiling faces, some masks this morning. I have a word for you this morning. I believe that there is power in the word of God. How many of you believe that this morning? There's power in the word of God. There's power in the word of God. There's power to change your life. And there's a power to determine your destiny through the word of God. I want to speak to you, and God has been speaking to my heart, to talk to you on God's family. Did you know that you are a part of God's family? You are a part of God's family. And that's what I want to speak. The church is God's family. Repeat that after me. The church is God's family. You know, recently I took up a new hobby, and uh, about well, three years ago, I got advice from one of my friends uh, that had a baby, and he said, one of the things that you want to do when you have a baby is get a good camera, because you want to capture every single moment that you have, because there's some great moments. So I got me a camera, and I got into the hobby of picture taking, and you know, oftentimes people do different kinds of photography. They do, you know, landscape photography. Some people like to do action photography where they take pictures of sporting events. I like to do, um, I like to do portrait photography because I believe I got two of the most beautiful models in the whole world that God has blessed me with. And my wife, Bria, she's got her hands full today because Victoria, we're trying to get her back in the church and to settle. As you can see, she got a new guitar this week and she started playing that guitar, and all she could think about was getting to church on Sunday with her new guitar and playing it with our praise team. I don't know if y'all saw her over there, but she was ready to run up on the stage, and you know we'll just let her do it. <laughs> I wanted to share with you a picture that I took last week of, at Easter of my daughter Victoria. If you could put that up. That's my Easter portrait that I took of Victoria on last week. And if there's any father here that can tell me how do you say no when your daughter looks up to you like that, I want to know because it's difficult. I want to give her everything that she has, that she wants. But I tell you what, 
It's good to look up to heaven and know that we have a father looking down at us that loves us. That loves us. He loves you. And, you know, I believe that God's house is a, a house for family. And I get disappointed when I see kids that, you know, on Sunday morning, they're at the park or at Sunday morning, they're at the mall or Sunday morning, they're playing sporting events on, on Sunday and they don't experience the church. They don't understand the, you know, the, I'm disappointed because they don't understand. They don't know Noah in the Bible. They don't know Moses and the story of Moses and they're not hearing about Daniel and learning about faith. They're not learning about David and how he fought Goliath. And they don't understand, like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. They don't know that. But um, something happens when you fall in love with the house of God. You got to understand, something happens to your life when you fall in love. When you wake up in the morning and say, I can't wait to get to the house of God. And it's a beautiful thing to see kids and children falling in love with the house of God. Something happens to our life. So I want to talk about God's family. One more time, say, I am a part of God's family. The scripture I want to read for this is found in Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to put this up on the screens for you. And here we find Jesus is speaking with the disciples. And he speaks of building his church. Building his church. Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to start at... Verse 13, and he asked his disciples saying, Jesus said, whom do men say that the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Who do you say that I am? And Simon answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build what? Help me out. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall what? Not prevail against it. You know, I love the church. I love Mount Zion. I love this place. Um, God speaks to me here. I've heard words that have changed my life right here. God meets me here on Sunday. And I love the fact that I'm strengthened because I'm surrounded by people of faith that are here. On a year like 2020, it felt good to be surrounded by people of faith. I, I love the church. I was raised in the church. A lot of you know that I've been here all of my life. And one thing that I learned from an early age is that we're not saved to be silent, not to come here at church and not tell others about the goodness of God. From an early age, I said, I'm not saved to be silent, but I'm here to get out of here and spread the gospel to more people. That's why at the age of 12, I accepted my calling to the ministry. And I love going from church to church and speaking uh, in front of different congregations about the goodness of God and having faith in what it does over your life. And, you know, my point is I, I love the church. Do I have any people that just love the church here, that fallen in love with the church? You know, I, I committed, I married my wife here at the church. My, my daughter was blessed here at the church. I was baptized here at the church. There are saints that prayed over me like Mrs. Johnson that used to pray over me right here at the church and believed in me at the church. There were elders that gave me some of the best advice in my life and were examples for me right here at the church. And you know something else? The devil gets mad every time I walk into the church. The devil gets mad. You want to do something to make the devil mad and Jesus glad, walk into the church. Because the devil knows that when you come into the church that you're going in the right direction. That God is blessing you. That God is empowering you. That God is doing and moving in your life. If you could just get in the house of God. And I said, it, I'm not a critic of the church. That's one thing that, you know, you have a conversation with me if I'm hanging out with my buddies and, you know, somebody goes to talking about the church you know, that's the thing that would get me upset. When someone starts talking about the church, I'm, I'm not a critic of the church. And sometimes when you watch the news, oftentimes they bring up the church, right? And uh, Easter time, they brought up the church and statistics and different things. And, you know, not so much the local news. Our local news, they show us some love. We love our, our Channel 3s and our 8s and our 5s. They show 19, they show us some love. But at national news, sometimes they'll bring up the church and I start to cringe. And, oh, geez, you know, they make us look bad. 
You know, you can't just pray. You know, the church ain't never said we just pray. We're about prayer and action. We're about prayer and action. So we're not about that. But, you know, sometimes I hear it and I thought to myself, because I used to be with the news for eight years. I used to work within the news. And I thought to myself, well, why don't they have more pastors being interviewed on the morning news shows and the different news shows? Why don't more pastors, why don't they get a, a faithful perspective? And I thought to myself, well, why do people watch the news? It's because of fear. Fear drives ratings. That's why, you know, I used to love ratings working at Fox 8. And when it snowed outside, everybody watched TV because they were afraid. And our ratings went high, so that was a good thing. That's why when you watch the news and they give you a teaser, well, there's a, you know, there's a killer out loose in the neighborhood. Find out if it's your neighborhood after these commercials. <laughs> and you don't want to turn, and the killer is a little chihuahua dog, you know. And everything is breaking news. Breaking news from the White House. Stick around. Joe Biden tripped on some stairs. Breaking news. But I thought, why don't they have pastors on there more often? But I thought about this. If they want fear, they're not going to get fear from me. They're going to get faith from me. Faith in action. So they know if they bring a pastor on there and they start feeding people faith in action, people ain't going to be watching your breaking news 24 hours in a day. But I'm not a critic of the church. Uh, the church, to me, does le more with less than any other organization. Right now, I work for a Fortune 500 company. I've worked for different organizations outside of what we do here at church. And I've seen what we, we work with. And I found out that the church does more with less than any other organization that is out there. And, you know, to, to prove it, I thought about it. I hired six people this year to be a part of my team. And I was looking at the job description and all the skill sets that people needed for the job that I was hiring on. And I thought to myself, well, what would be the job description for bishop making? So I wrote down a few things and I said, well, what would be the job description? I wanna see if anybody would like to take this job this morning, okay? We'll do it that way. Um, the job description for pastor making would be he's a preacher, he's a teacher, he's a writer, he's a counselor, he's a financial advisor, he's a therapist, there's a lot of people that need help out here. He's a designer. Look at his beautiful place. He's a community leader. Look what we did with COVID. Some people think he could sing. He's not here. He left me today, so I'm going to make fun of him. Technician, landscaper, lawyer. You'll be amazed at some of the things that come across pastor. Some people say he's a dancer. Now, who wants that job? Who's going to take that on? My point is, is that I'm not a critic. I see all that the church does. You know, we're in COVID right now. You talk to your doctor, and your doctor probably told you, you probably should think about getting this vaccine and protecting yourself and protecting your family. Pastor Macon said the same thing from the pulpit, but not only did he say it, but he, he went on to the governor, he went on to the leadership, and he solidified sites that are special for us that we can go to to get protected. Y'all to give God praise for the different things that Bishop Macon and God is doing here. And I'm not saying that this is a perfect place, but I'm saying this is a great place that God has blessed us with. And we do so much. The, the, the church is so important. And, you know, you talk about the church and then I get on the bad side a little bit. You know, as a pastor, oftentimes I travel and um, I talk to people and, you know, I'll be on a flight and they'll ask me, you know, what do you do? You know, I'll say I'm a pastor. And that's when the conversation starts. And I'm like, oh, I know where this is going. You know, and. You know, I'll be on the plane, I'll sit down, I'll talk to a person, and they'll tell me, you know, I don't go to church because I don't believe the church is a building. And I get that. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But that's like saying the family is not a home. But if you want a family, you probably should have a home. Or I'll get the person that says, you don't have to go to church to be saved. But I don't understand if you were saved, why you don't want to go to church. I've not met a well-balanced Christian that does not want to go to church. You know, you say, if you say that you're a tennis player, we probably should see you at some point on the tennis court. You got other people that say, I got hurt at church. That's why I don't go. I got hurt at church. People go, get, go all sorts of places and get hurt. People get hurt at school, but they go back to school. 
you get hurt and complain about your job every single day, but you go back to your job every day. I said it this morning, I know people that get hurt every single weekend at the bar, come home with a headache, arguing with their wife, arguing with this, got in a fight, and you know what, the next weekend, where do they go? Right back there to the bar. But I don't go to church because I got hurt. But I believe that the church is the most important group in the entire world. The most important group in the entire world. Every Sunday before COVID, 120 million people would go to church every single Sunday. Every single Sunday, there's 2 billion members of churches around the entire world. That's more. More people go to church on Sunday than any sporting event in the entire year. It's the most important, most important group in the world. And it made me ask myself, why do people go to church every Sunday when you could just stay at home? Why drive up in the parking lot of a church to stay safe when you could just stay at home? You know, sometimes anybody ever go home and look at social media and you got your friend that put on their Sunday fun day and they got, you know, they're just relaxing. Why do so many people go to church on Sunday? And it could be a few things. It could be out of habit. Some people go because it's their habit. Some people go to church because it's their duty. They feel a duty to go to church. Some people go out of guilt. Some people go because of, they feel pressure to go to church. But my guess is when you think about the people of the world, they don't have, they have a limited understanding of what the church is. I want to tell you what it's not. The church is not a building. They're right on that. The church is not a building. Jesus Christ didn't die for a building, right? The church is not an institution. Some people like to think of the institution of the church. It's not an in institution. The church is not an event. The church is not a place. But this is what it is. And I'll throw this scripture up for you writers who want to read tonight. Um, Acts chapter 2, 41 through 46. And I summed it up by saying what the church is. It's a spiritual family that I belong to that helps me fulfill God's purpose. That's what the church is. The church is a, it's a spiritual family. And I believe that the church is the most important group in the entire world. You say why? Why is the church the most important group out of all the groups in the entire world? One, it's because the church is God's family. Amen. The church is God's family. When you were born, you were born into the human race. Uh -huh. But when you accepted Christ, you became a part of God's family. God's family is the church. It's a support system. It's a foundation that God gave to us, and it's a blessing, and it's a gift, and it's a more important than any government. It's more important than any institution, any business that's out there. It's the family of God. The second reason is this. It's the reason why God created the universe. Why did God create all of this? Because he wanted a family. He wanted someone to be with him that he can experience all of this, imagine, this amazing place that we live in. When springtime comes and you look outside and you see the trees with all the buds up there, it looks gorgeous. God wanted you to experience that as his family. It says it right there in Ephesians. It says, according, according as he have chosen us, you are chosen in him before the foundation of the world. The message version says it like this. It says, long before he had laid earth's foundation, he had us in mind. That's beautiful, isn't it? He had you in mind. And this is my favorite part. He had settled on us as the focus of his love. Did you know that you are the focus of God's love? You may be going through something right now, but it's good to know that even in the midst of difficulties, God's love is focused on on you you are the focus of the god's love so god created the universe another reason why it's the most important group in the entire world is that jesus died for his church he died for his family he died for us if you want to know how important something is to someone find out what they would do for that thing how important are you to jesus christ he died for you you know i'm a fan of uh um, I really like the music of Prince. Does anybody listen to Prince? Any fans of Prince around here? I just wanted to see how many saved people I had here. This morning, I told them this morning, they said, you know, well, pastor, what are you doing listening to Prince? You know, what do you, what do you know about Prince? 
And I said, I don't have that excuse that many people have. Many people can say, well, I ain't always been saved or, you know, that's back then before I met Christ, you know. And it's like, because I was raised in a church. I was preaching. I don't got that. Some of y'all, anybody ever use that excuse? That's before I got saved. That excuse. But Prince, he sang this song that I love, and it said, I would die for you. That song is a Christian song, by the way. He listens to those lyrics. I, I even, I had to bring out the lyrics. Somebody questioned it. It said, I'm not your woman. I'm not your man. I am something that you, somebody is singing it here. I'll never beat you. I'll never lie. And if you're evil, I forgive you by and by, because you... Oh, that's terrible. Stop it. I done lost the sermon. <laughs> but if you listen to that song, that song not only inhabits the characteristics of Jesus Christ, but the Holy Trinity. But it's good to know that. That was, that was fun. That was embarrassing and fun. I'm going to move on to the next one. Jesus died for you. Last reason that the church is the only thing on earth that will last forever. You know, I, I, sometimes I smile when I hear news stories and people talking about, oh, the church is going away, the church is fading away. You know, the church is going to outlast everything. Amen. The family of God is going to outlast. The family of God ain't going nowhere. Even through this COVID, I believe that God's going to send a revival and it's going to be a beautiful thing. The church ain't going nowhere. No business, no organization, no corporation is going to outlast the church. I said it this morning, we got all the people that love Starbucks, and they go to Starbucks religiously. You know, every day they go there and get a mocha chaka frappuccino latte, you know, and they pay $15 for that one drink because they got some points or something like that, you know. The church is going to outlast Starbucks. There's nothing in this world that the church, that's going to last longer than the church. The scripture says it in Ephesians. It says this, unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. The church is the only thing that will last forever. You know, I'm gonna finish with this one. How many of you know that there is power in the church? There is power in the church. There is power in this place. We talked about a little bit about the purpose, but there is power, and I wanna put this scripture up, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna finish off with this one. If we could put the scripture up. Uh, back up there, verse 18, and it says, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build what? My church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock I will build my church. Well, what rock is he talking about? Well, he's talking about the foundation. Is he talking about an actual rock? No. The rock is what Peter said that Jesus is. Peter said that Jesus is the Son of God. So we're building this church on the Son of God. And I like this. Listen up. I don't want you to miss this one because it's great. The church is in the process of being built. So you say, Pastor, what are you talking about? We're in a church right now. There's churches all around the world. You go many places to see churches. The church is built. He says the church is in the process of being built because I'm not talking about the building. I'm not talking about the building. I said it earlier, Jesus Christ did not die for buildings. So, so pastor, wait, 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 what are you talking about then? Uh, uh, the thing is, the word built in the Greek means to repair. It means to strengthen. So he's not talking about the building. What he's talking about is you. So a good, healthy church will build your life, repair what's broken, and strengthen you in your weak places. I think some of y'all could have praised God a little bit better right there because I could stand here in front of you and I could testify to you that I've been weak. I was broken and I was weak, but I praise God. I thank God I have not arrived to where I need to be in life, but I thank God that I'm not what I used to be. I was broken, but I thank God that I'm not what I used to be because God healed me. God changed me. God saved me. God fixed me. God delivered me. He fixed me. Do I have a witness in the house of God that you're not what you used to be? And you thank God. I don't do what I used to do. I don't hang out with who I used to hang out. 
I don't say what I used to say because God is building me. How many of you know that God is building you? And that's why I go to church. Because every time I come into the house of God, God is building me. He's building you. How about us all stand on your feet? Stand on your feet. I want to close with that last part of that scripture. That's one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite parts in the Bible. Right here, I want you to get this point. This is for somebody this morning. And the gates of hell shall what? Come on, and the gates of hell shall what? When we look at that, the gates of hell shall not prevail. I tell someone today, the gates of hell shall not prevail. When you see that word gates, what does gates mean? Are you thinking about a gate? What you need to know about a gate is the gate is where the governors are. That's where the leaders are. That's where the senators are. If you look at it in the word, the gates translates to powers. Gates translates to forces. So you can almost take it, all the forces of hell, all the powers of hell. You got to understand that the gates are where the smart people are. The gates are where the gifted people are. The, the gates are where the best people are. So, so what you need to get from this is that hell can send their best. Hell can send their strongest. Hell can send their smartest. But they will not prevail against the church of God. It doesn't matter what the devil sends your way. He will not prevail. Every time the devil tried to look at you and keep you up all night. Struggling, worrying, not knowing how I'm going to make it through. The devil tried to get you to worry. Making you think that you're going to lose your family. Making you think that you're going to lose your health. Making you think you're going to lose your job. Making you think you're going to lose your life and lose your house. But you need to tell the devil that I am a victor and not a victim. I am above only and never beneath. I am the head and not the tail. And that God has given me strength and we will win. Come on, give God praise all around the sanctuary. Come on, give God praise all around the sanctuary. Give him praise all in the parking lot. We win, we win, we win, we win, we win. The victory is yours. For the family of God, the victory is yours. And you say, pastor, 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 it sounds really good. It gets me excited. But how do you know? How do you know that in the end, we win? Well, you learned it, you learned it last week. Jesus Christ, he showed us who has all the power. Jesus, he showed us who has all the power. In case you missed the story last week, I tell you, tell you once again, it was on a hill called Calvary. There you had Jesus Christ on that hill. And he died right there on the cross. And at that point, the devil started a party right then because he thought that he won. So they started partying. They started partying. They started having a good old time because they said, I got him. And they celebrated that Jesus was dead. And you said, well, who is they that party with the devil? Well, that was evil that party with the devil. That was sickness that party with the devil. That was disease that party with the devil. Pride was down there having a good time with the devil. Sickness was having a good time with the devil. Jealousy was having a good time. Oh, they were having a good time in heaven. But check this out. That party was so good that it lasted for three whole days. Has anybody ever partied for three days? They partied in hell for three days. Woo! But then on the third day, I believe it was about early Sunday morning. It got at the height of the party. All of a sudden, they heard a knock on the door. And pride said, pride said, wait a minute, who is that? Who is that? And they heard a voice that said, I am the light of the world. I am the king of kings. I am the everlasting father. And then he rose up with all the power in the palm of his hand. Somebody give him praise all around the sanctuary. You will have the victory through Christ Jesus. Give him praise, give him praise all around the parking lot. Give God praise today. You will have the victory because God gave you the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. How many of you received that word today? And I just want to pray over you before we go today. You know there is no greater privilege in life to be, than to be a part of God's family. To be a part of God's family. There's nothing better, there's nothing greater than being a part of God's family. There's no greater time to commit your life to God than right now. Do it right now. No greater time. And for someone here today, that day may be your day. This day may be your day. You may be out in the parking lot. You may be listening online. Today is your day. And if God was working through me, through this message, hopefully as I was speaking, you heard God speaking to you. And for someone here, God was calling you. For someone, God was strengthening you, but revealing to you. But God is calling, and if God wants anything from you, he wants you to believe. Believe that he is God and that you are not. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Believe that there is an eternity, and there's only one way that you can get there, and that's through Jesus Christ and believing that he's your Lord and Savior. If you believe that today is your day to commit your life to Jesus Christ, we want to put that up there. We want you to text that number or go to mzob.org and you can accept Jesus Christ there. We want to pray for you. We want to be with you. We have a special prayer that we want to pray. If you want to be a member here at Mount Zion, you can be a member here at Mount Zion. We'll love to walk with you. We are a family and we stick together. Amen. We stick together here at Mount Zion. We got your back here at Mount Zion. We make a difference in the communities that we serve here at Mount Zion and we'll love to have you here let me pray over you today if you could just lift up your hands to the heavenlies father God Lord we just come to you Lord we're grateful Lord to be in your family to be in your arms your protection the peace that you provide father we're grateful father for this place Lord for these people we thank you for the faithful people of God that are here today, Lord. I pray that this word goes deep down into their hearts, Father. And as they leave out of here, Father, that they'll be surrounded by your shield, Father. Knowing that they can walk in victory, Father. Because you have given us the victory. We don't have to worry, Father. The devil can party all he wants. But we have the victory. We will win. Even at times where it looks like we're behind. I want you to encourage the faithful people are here today to let, let them know that you have comeback power and there's a comeback coming in their life 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 Father Lord and we claim it Lord and believe in your precious name we thank you Father for this day we thank you for this word we'll forever give your name the praise, the glory and the honor we pray all these things let all the people of God shout amen and give God praise one more time in the sanctuary And I believe. And I believe. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.